What was life like for ordinary people in ancient Rome? This was the vast majority, some 99% of the inhabitants of the city. It was also a very diverse group, ranging from well-off merchants to homeless beggars and everything in between. It is also hard to describe life of this group because most preserved texts from ancient Rome were written by and for the elite. Also, most homes and places for the non-elite have not been as well preserved as those of the elite and have attracted less attention from archaeologists. So instead of trying to reconstruct a typical day of a non-elite person, I will describe some general traits of daily life that are common to most members of this group. 2,000 years ago, Rome was a densely built up city with over a million inhabitants. It was not uncommon for houses to be five or even six stories high. This is one of the best preserved high-rise buildings we have from the Roman world. On the ground floor we have shops, above that we have apartments for the shopkeepers. On this level, the third floor, we have the fine apartments for the upper class and on the fourth and fifth and sixth floors we have the simpler lodgings for the common people. A family could live crammed into a tiny one-room apartment with very simple equipment for food preparation and hygiene, making them dependent upon public facilities. For personal hygiene, you visited the public baths and the public latrine. This might give us a good view how an ancient street in Rome looked like. This is the Argelitum street, an ancient street in Rome still in use today. The houses lining the street are about the same height as in ancient Rome. And although the street might look quite narrow today, it's actually one of the main thoroughfares of the ancient city. Traders and local craftsmen walked and sold in the street or set up their booths and barrows, further blocking the already narrow street, as described by the Roman writer Seneca. The cake seller with his varied cries, the sausage man, the confectioner and all the vendors of food hawking their wares, each with his own distinctive intonation. Ordinary Romans had to eat out in a bar such as this. And this was out of necessity because of a lack of space and the hazard of fire. Most people didn't have kitchen facilities at home. Thus these bars became busy hotspots for the common people. But according to the Roman elite, they were rife with crime, violence and prostitution. But archaeology and stories written by ordinary Romans paint another picture. They scribbled down their experiences on walls, just like modern graffiti. The smallest urban district was the Vicus, the Roman name for an urban neighborhood, corresponding to a single street and its adjoining houses. The inhabitants elected their own officials who were responsible for keeping the order and prevent fire. Since most of city dwellers worked in the residential neighborhood and used the same shops and facilities, a close-knit community was easily formed. This is a street fountain where people from around would gather to get their household water. So it became a natural meeting point for the neighbors. So it's not surprising that it's here that we have this altar to the neighborhood gods, where you could sacrifice to the lares. So for the ordinary Roman, city life was almost never private and the street might have become like a common room for the neighborhood.